Hello class, in this video I'm going to do exercise 6.4 in the textbook. This concerns doing a formal proof using the Boolean connectives. So if you check out your premises, um, looks like we have A conjunction B or C as our premise and what we need to do is prove C or B. In order to do this, we're gonna to have to pull up Fitch. So I did that for you already. I opened up the exercise file. Remember, open up the exercise file for these uh, exercises that you have to do from Fitch. Don't just put in all the premises because it nicely has the goal, goal sentence filled in for you down here and it can check your proof completely as to whether or not you obeyed the constraints. Because of course what you could do is just add a single line and put your premise there and cite Anacon. That would check out, but that's not uh, adequate because you're not allowed to do that. That's just cheating. You have to use your intro and elim rules for the Boolean connectives. So let's do this for real. How are we supposed to um, prove this? Well, the first thing we need to do is just look at the main connective of the information that we're given. So what we're given is this disjunction. We know these two things, and there's only one way to use a disjunction. You have to do proof by cases. So let's first do a case for this. Uh, we need to start a subproof in order to do proof by cases. If you go up to your proof menu, you can just click, uh, in order to start a new subproof, it's command P. Now, what do we need to do in the assumption line of this subproof? We need to reproduce our case exactly. That's the first disjunct. You can include the wide parentheses or not. That doesn't really matter. Now after that, what we need to do in this subproof is prove our conclusion. If we can show that our conclusion follows in this case, then what we can do is start another subproof. So we're going to have to start a subproof down here with our second case, namely C. You're going to have to have a subproof for each disjunct that you have, and we can prove that our conclusion follows in this case too. If we can do both of those things, then what we can do out here is just conclude what we wanted to show, namely C or B. This is going to follow then by what rule? Proof by cases. That is disjunction elim. All we have to do is cite disjunction elim and cite the original disjunction. That's what we're doing the disjunction elim on. And then the cases that we're utilizing, namely the case for the first disjunct and the case for the next disjunct. So this will all check out as long as we can end each of these cases with that sentence. So how would we do such a thing? Well, C clearly entails C or B. So this is just gonna follow by, oops, disjunction intro. Because after all, we already know C. So I will cite disjunction intro on this and click my C. Don't forget to actually cite the premises that you're using. Uh, so we can just get rid of that line. This should check out so far then in that case. Oh good, we've done one case so far. Now we need to make sure that our conclusion follows in the other case too. Well, how do we follow the C or, show that C or B follows in this case? Remember, look at the connective that you have next. This is my wide scope connective conjunction. You can just bring down the conjuncts. If you don't know what to do, bring down A and bring down B and then reevaluate. Of course, you could just think about it now and decide, okay, actually all I need is B because my conclusion is C or B. And if I have B, then I can just get C or B. How do I show this then? What rule do I need? I got this from the fact that I already had B. So I'm doing a disjunction intro on this line. Click, please. Uh, okay. Now I need to do uh, a justification for this line. Well, how did I know that? I had a dis uh, conjunction up here. I knew A and B. That's how I knew B. So I'm just bringing down the conjuncts. That is just conjunction elim. Uh, okay, awesome. Now let me ask you this. See if you can figure out why I put from C, I added or B at the end of it. But when I had B, I didn't add B or C, I added the C or to the front of the B. Why did I do that? Because proof by cases works by proving some sentence in both cases. It has to be the identical sentence that ends each of these subproofs. Only then am I allowed to export it out of those subproofs onto my main proof line. So that's why I have to remember uh, how to use the disjunction intro rule properly. I'm allowed to add disjuncts after some sentence I know or before some sentence I know. And you're going to choose it because I've looked at where I'm going. I need to. I already know what I need, and that is what tells me uh, what to add. So now hopefully if I check all this out, it's gonna work. Hey, look, I even satisfied my goal sentence. I didn't cheat and use Anacon or Totecon or anything like that. So you could save this and send it to Grade Grinder to make sure that it's perfectly right and you will be done with exercise 6.4. Thanks.